Little girl, you look so lonesome. I see you all feeling blue. Ain't no use in staying at Ah, yes. Don't you find that it is easy to become trapped and stuck in a rut without ever realizing it? Meet Felix, our hero. He is sandwiched between the loathsome Tom and Joyce. They are friends of routine and subject him to stories like... So anyway, as she's leaving, she drops something, bends over, gave her my stamp of approval, you know what I mean? Slaps her on the ass, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stamp of approval, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, well. As he bought another round of drinks, he wondered if the evening was going to improve. All right, you naughty birds. <laughs> it did not. <laughs> yes, poor Felix was in a rut, struggling with friends he despised. As his lonely footsteps echoed on the still tiles of Cannon Street, he found himself pondering his situation. He spent nearly every evening with Tom and Joyce, cramped into the corner of a dingy pub but he always felt alone, bored, and worn out. There had to be something more, didn't there? As he waited for a delayed train, he found himself drifting into sleep. A sleep that would change his life as the station became alive with unseen forces. Mixing that with your bare hands. I mean, I don't mind doing it with my bare hands. I'm not concerned for you. I'm concerned for us. Ah, look. What the, what the fuck? No. No. Jesus Christ. Where the fuck am I? Jesus doesn't venture down here. This is my domain. And you are a captive of the Cannon Street Cannibals. These are my associates, Nasha and Muncha. Come on, Felix, it's time to wake up. Come on. This is no nightmare, boy. You're enjoying the company of three of London's most refined and scariest cannibals. Now you need to relax. Nasha, a beer for our guest to help him calm down. You know what they say about frightened meat. Frightened meat? Well, don't worry. It's really rather sumptuous. Quite. Please, please don't kill me. Whether we hurt you or not depends on you. And you really eat people? Not always. We do have rules. Uh, we use, kind of see what we do is carry out something of a valuable service. Which is? We only eat people who want to be eaten. Quite right. We go and search for the hopeless types of coves for whom it has all become a little bit too much. We bring them down here and help them out of their misery. Why the fuck did he bring me down here? Ash, come on, like you're all passed out. I was like. asleep, you psycho! Like, I mean, like, like, you had a good juicy pair of calves in your life, so it was a good bet. To answer the question that you haven't asked yet, no. We don't eat everybody. If you can prove you want to go, then you can. How do I, how do I prove that? I want to go. You have to answer a riddle. It'll help you to, um... Help you reorder your brain. Get your thinking straight. 
And, let's be honest, we do have a flair for the dramatic. Okay, and, and what happens if I get it wrong? We eat you. As I said, it's our rules down here. Are you ready? No. I am the rock before Sisyphus. I am the world above Atlas. I am commuting on the district line. To understand me is to know happiness. What am I? Well, the only, the only thing I can think of that links together the district line and Sisyphus is eternal struggle. So I think your struggle. Well done. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, wait, wait, relax. wait, you said... Could I cut your rolls on, relax. We've removed all surplus and a necessary struggle. Simply surviving down here is all the struggle we need. Survival to us is what rolling a rock was to Sisyphus. A refined lifestyle which we have boiled down and reduced into a fine consomme. To me it's something of a manifestation of No, no, no more manifestations, no. Struggle is just simple happiness. The only trouble comes when you've got too much struggle, too many boulders that you're trying to push uphill. Gotta keep it to one man. So you're like those guys who just go off into the wilderness and, and, and buy a hut and, and then live in isolation for the rest of their lives? Yeah, exactly. Except the countryside is a dump. Ghastly place. And do people actually choose to be eaten? Oh, you'd be surprised. The tube is simply a hotspot for people looking to give up the ghost. Yeah, like if you ever see someone playing that Candy Crunch game or any of those stupid phone games, like 50-50 good chance to be eaten. Okay, just to clarify one last time, you're not going to eat me now. Yes, of course. Our word is solid. You're free to go back any time you want. Right then. Well, I mean, I don't really know where I am, and, and, and also, like, while, while I'm here anyway, I, I, maybe I could have another beer and, and ask some questions. I've got a lot of questions. And so Felix found himself engrossed in an evening spent talking about food, names, the history of Cannon Street, and many more weird and wonderful things. They told him of an aristocratic London estate that holds human hunts for rich Americans, willing to pay for the privilege of hunting man. It was almost the unseen dawn when Felix told the Dean he would like to return home. Yes, of course. High time you're on your way home. But when you wake up tomorrow, remember Sisyphus. Find yourself a struggle, a rock to roll that you enjoy, and do it for the rest of your life. Get rid of all the unnecessary ones. Just so. For instance, even though we are the Cannon Street Cannibals, we can, more often than not, choose not to be. Oh, cannibals, that is, yes. Great. Well, I yeah, cool. If, if you're ever up, 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 up top, then, you know, we could go for a beer um, and, and catch up and... What do you mean, wake up? If you would, Muncher. Yeah, see you around. No, no, wait! For the next few days, Felix couldn't quite shake the feeling that he was still stuck in a particularly strong dream. He went to work, met up with the loathsome Tom and Joyce, talked to his mother on the phone, but somehow it all felt fuzzy, as if he was observing his reflection in a pool of murky water. Now as Felix sat listening to Tom tell another slimy tale, he found himself coming to a satisfying conclusion. To have an adventurous and exciting life, he didn't have to climb down into the underground and live in smoky twilight. All he needed to do was to take action. And at this moment in time, that meant telling Tom... Nine tequilas and I was absolutely... Tom! Up. Shut the fuck up! What? You what? Just shut up! You're not even a rock worth rolling! 
rock. You're an, you're an extra struggle. You're a shit rock. Over bridge of sights to rest my eyes in shade. Felix wore a look of purpose and resolution that had not been seen on his face in years. He remembered his goals, his dreams of building a life and looking after his parents and all the rest of it. Rocks that he would happily push until the end of his days. He wrote a quick thank you to the cannibals who had opened his eyes and left in the station with the hoppiest beer he could find.